I was just in here praying and thinking about some stuff and just hearing God speak God speak to me. And you know, about a week or two ago, God told me, spoke to me, he said, make preparations for your miracle. You know, and he began to speak to me about that making a preparation preparation for your miracle. And you know, I heard um A. A. Allen say one time, he said, You gotta think big, believe big, talk big, and God'll do big. But you know, people don't understand that and they don't do that no more. And you know, I just said that thing about it, you know, when the enemy wants to get you off track, what's he do? He brings somebody else in your life. He brings a man and a woman across a woman's path, gets her sidetracked and gets her distracted. And he uses them smooth and flattering words and just gets her just like melted butter in his hands. And, you know, and with men, he brings some pretty woman in their life across their path on their job and everything and just gets them sidetracked. You know, and when God wants you to get deeper in the Word, you know, first thing happens is you start allowing yourself to get distracted by the TV and everything going on around you. You know, and that's what the enemy does. He brings in distractions. He brings in all these distractions. And, you know, you know, people get out there committing adultery and stuff, and the Bible says, that a man, when a, if a man looks at a woman, just looks at a woman, he's committed and, and lusts after her. He's committed adultery with her in his heart already. And that goes for the woman too. It goes both ways. And you know, as far as, far as your marriage goes, you know, you'll commit emotional adultery long before you ever commit physical adultery. I mean, and you might not never get to the point where you commit cross that line and commit physical adultery, but you've committed emotional adultery. You've been unfaithful to your spouse through your emotions and emotional adultery. And, and in God's eyes, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And you got to prepare yourself. You got to prepare to receive your miracle. You know, you, it, if you gotta act like you got it. You gotta talk like you got it. Man, you gotta you gotta just begin to before you ever even receive it, you gotta begin to by faith just act like you got it. Man, you gotta talk like you got it. Act like you got it. Testify like you got it. Man, if you wait till you receive it before you believe it, you'll probably never get it. You know, so many people, you know, they're like, man, uh, I believe it when I see it. But if you wait till you see it, if you wait till you feel it, you'll never, you'll probably never receive your miracle. I see a lot of great healing ministers that move in the gift of healing and stuff. And when they minister healing to people, the first thing they tell them is to do something you couldn't do before. I mean, anything. I heard a testimony of this minister. I, I'm not even going to mention his name because if I did, you know who I'm talking about and people would start slandering him and I'm not going there. But I remember hearing a testimony. This girl was on her bed paralyzed and she couldn't move nothing but her eyes. And they told her when the man of God comes in here, begin to do something you couldn't do before so that when he comes in, you know, he can see the faith, an act of faith, do something. This woman couldn't do nothing but move her eyes. So when he came in, she started and laid hands on her. She started moving her eyes left to right, left to right, up, down, up, down, left, right. Till she finally, she jumped up off that bed and won't paralyze no more. She was healed. And you have to, you have to begin to act like you already have it long before you ever get it. Like I said before, you'll commit emotional adultery 
long before you ever commit physical adultery. And if you wait till you feel healed, and if you wait till you are healed to believe you're healed and talk like you're healed and act like you're healed, you'll probably never get it. I mean, you'll probably die with what you, what you have because unless God just intervenes and steps in and, 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 and steps in anyway, um, you know, and just ignores what your, your actions and attitudes and everything and just does a miracle for you in spite of you. You know, and Moses, when he was delivering the children of Israel out of Egypt, you know, when the last, that last miracle, when the death angel went through, went through, you know, the whole thing, they had to prepare the Passover meal, put blood over the doorposts, and Moses told them, you know, pack your bags, put on your walking shoes, grab your walking stick, and eat that meal while you got your shoes on and your coat on and your walking stick in your hands. You know, they had to look like they were going somewhere before they ever went anywhere. They had to look like they were heading out before Pharaoh ever released them. And that's what they did. And Pharaoh told them, get out, get out, get all of you and just get out. And they just walked on out walked on out of Egypt, you know, but they had their bags packed and by faith they were already ready to go. And, and you know, that's what you got to do. You need a miracle. I mean, you got to talk that miracle. You got to believe that miracle. You got to act on that miracle, man. And you guys got to get out there and act and just do it and just act like you got it long before you ever get it. And, you know, the, um, even in the New Testament, you know, Jesus told, the Bible tells a story about when uh, 10 lepers came to Jesus. You know, they had leprosy. That's, that was an incurable disease back then. It was a death, death uh, sentence and long and painful. And they came to crying to Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus told them to go show themselves to the to the priests and offer the sacrifice for uh for leprosy and everything and it says while they were on their way they received their miracle while they were on their way man they didn't have it but while they were on the way they got it they were walking on doing what they were told believing god and obeying god and this is while they were on their way, they got it. And that's what you got to do. You got to believe you got it and obey God and act like you got it long before you ever get it. And it says two of them turned around and come back and fell at Jesus' feet and worshipped him. Man, and, that, and that's faith. Man, it, while they were on, man, nothing really got me. While they were on their way, they received their miracle. Man, you got to act like it. You got to make preparations for it and act like you got it long before you ever get it. God made preparations, the Bible said, before the foundation of the world. He made preparation for your salvation. He made preparation for your healing and for your deliverance. Now you got to act like you receive it long before you ever receive it. Man, you know, I mean, and, and you look at this story, Jesus tells, it tells the story in the New Testament of the Roman centurion comes to Jesus and cries out to him, falls at his feet, cries out to him, and says, Lord, my servant is on, on the death. Will you, will you heal him? And Jesus said, take me to him. And he says, no, I'm, I'm a man under authority and I say, and I have authority and I say this one go and he goes and this one come in comes. He said, and I recognize authority when I see it. So just speak the word and my servant will be healed. So Jesus spoke the word. He said, go, your, your faith, he's healed, your servant's healed. And he turns around and leaves. And it goes back home. 
and the servant is right there healed and made whole. And, you know, that's what you have to do. You, I mean, it said he was, Jesus was all. It says, he says, I haven't seen such faith, not even in Israel. And, you know, he came and he just let, you know, he didn't see any change. He didn't hear about any change. He just says, speak the word, I receive it. And then he goes. And you got to just act like you got it. You got to talk like you got it before you ever get it. If you wait to receive it, if you wait to hear it and see it and and every and experience it, you'll probably never get it. You'll probably be waiting next year this time, still sitting in a wheelchair, still in pain, legs still hurting, knees still hurting. You know, if you wait till you feel like going to church, you'll probably never go to church. I mean, I like what David Hogan said, anything that stands between me and going to church is a devil. And if you wait till the conditions are right, God is never convenient. He's never convenient. If you want to meet with God and hear from God, God's going to speak to you in some very inconvenient hours. Two o'clock in the morning is not convenient. But a lot of times he'll speak to me to get up at two o'clock and pray and talk and spend time with him. And God is not convenient. I mean, you need a miracle. You know, God may tell you to go to the other side of the country to get your miracle. And it ain't convenient to go to the other side of the country. But are you going to obey or are you going to sit there and sulk and say, God, why can't you just touch me right here where I'm at? You know, God ain't, God's not always convenient. And, and you know, you got to do what God tells you to do. You know, when he told um, the Syrian uh, general that had leprosy, Naaman, said, go dip in the Jordan seven times. Man, it wasn't convenient to dip in the nastiest river, the muddiest river in Israel. But that's what the prophet said, to go dip in the muddy Jordan River seven times. And he didn't want to do that, John. He was like, ain't there some better ones around? I mean, man, my my uh, high notoriety and everything, my high status, can't we dip somewhere else? But he just said, go dip in the Jordan and turn around and walk off. So he had to go dip in the Jordan River seven times. And he dipped once, no change. Twice, no change. Three times, no change. Four times, no change. Five times, no change. Six times, no change. Can you imagine? He done dipped six times. Leprosy still there, just as, just as big as ever. How many times you done testified, prayed, and done everything you knew to do, and you still walking down the road with your sickness? You get up tomorrow morning. You done told everybody you're healed. You get up tomorrow morning. You can't even hardly move. You still ain't got your miracle. But it says he on the seventh time when he dipped and he came back up, he was washed clean, skin white as snow. He was healed. And, you know, even even uh, Elijah, when he went to Mount Carmel, he made preparation. You know, and it says when he challenged the prophets of Baal, he called Ahab and all the prophets of Baal up there. And after they, um, you know, they set their sacrifice up and everything, and they called on Baal, but nothing. And Elijah mocked them and mocked them. Said, maybe if God's on a journey and can't hear you yell a little louder. Maybe he's on vacation. Maybe it's one translation said, maybe he's sitting on the toilet. You know, they made fun of him. He mocked them. But then when his turn come, he set the altar back up. He dug a trench in it, around it. He laid the sacrifice in order, and then he didn't make it easy on God. He poured 12 barrels of water on the altar, on the sacrifice. Then he prayed and cried out to God, and God came down and poured fire upon it and answered his cry, his cry and he slew all the prophets of Baal right there. You know, and you got to just... Make preparation and act like you got your miracle, you know, and do what you got to do to receive your miracle. God is with you. God is on your side, man. And you just got to trust him. 
You know, you just got to think big, act big, talk big, believe big, and I'll, and God will do big. You know, and act like you got that miracle. Talk like you got that miracle. You know, and watch what God does. God's going to move on your behalf. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're dealing with. Man, I don't know what the doctors told you. I don't I don't know all, all that stuff, but I know what the answer is. I know Jesus is the answer. And he paid the price before the foundation of the world. And it's your covenant. It's your covenant right to receive the miracle that God has for you today. It's not his will for you to spend the rest of your life sick and afflicted. I don't care what nobody says. You'll not convince me that it's his will. It's not It's not the, your will to go to Walmart and pay $500 on, spend $500 in groceries and buy all these $500 worth of groceries and go home and leave them sitting there. But yet God paid your price for you with the most dear treasure in heaven. And then you want to sit back and and not receive and say it must not be God's will. Man, it is God's will. Go in there and receive it. Act like you got it. Talk big. Think big. Believe big. And watch God do big. Man, be blessed today and watch what God does for you. I believe God. Man, I believe it is going to be for you as God's word said it's going to be. Man, be blessed. I bless you right now today. May the life-giving power of God come upon you and invade your situation right where you're at in Jesus' name.